Standing in front of you now, I can feel my heart is pounding and I feel like my throat is closing up and um, I'm very nervous because this is a, this is, this is, I, <laughs> this is me needing to just completely be bare in front of you. I, I didn't wear any makeup. Um, I wanted to be pretty for you. I wanted to have everything memorized, but that, that isn't what is anymore. It's not what's authentic and it's not what I have to give. And I feel like if I don't give um, what I have and just where I am, that's gonna kill me almost as fast as this disease is trying to kill me. This is what my pain sounds like. I stroke my nails across the steel strings of this pain and I hear, ready or not, get ready, get it going. And I see the New York subway train, cold and always ready, rushing by. Ready or not, get it going as it passes. I stroke the steel strings of this pain, this ancient pain. I poke it like it were a tooth. And I am tackled by rage, pain, and obliteration. My sleeping atom bomb. I'm like a tea kettle with no holes. I want to kill myself when it explodes at its worst. I burn. I wish to explode to end the hopelessness of no hope. I read this as I wrote it. It is not what I want to say. The words don't express the beauty inside that I need to show you. I want you to shiver with the pain too. I need you to understand but my words sound stilted to my ears. This is what chronic Lyme disease has taken from me. The train will take us to acting school in Midtown Manhattan. I am terrified slash excited to go, to disappoint myself, to uncover what is inside me, to feel like I'm leaning on something so relaxed that is where I've always been. And when it is over, I am surprised at what worked through me. The relief of a hole punched in the tea kettle. I skip on the street with the joy of emptiness and get bagels and an eclair. I don't want to describe what happens next. It tires me to even think of describing, and I fear words that will disappoint me with ineffectuality. I'd rather not talk at all. But the tea kettle is boiling with no hole, and the atom bomb threatens. Forgive my platitudes and thud-like sounds. My prayer is that you can hear my muffled scream, that you can hear me underneath. This disease, called chronic Lyme disease, this is what has been taken from me. At one time, I created stories with my stuffed animals, my fingers, my friends. Sometimes I wrote, sometimes I acted out characters, sometimes I sang or danced the story. Creativity danced like flames from one finger to another, and I didn't doubt it. I didn't doubt it was mine to use and didn't doubt it would kick in when I needed to show my worth. But it also fed me. I need you to know now that at best I remember this sickness started at six years old. I was tired. I got sick a lot. I got more and more depressed. It became harder to call up the creativity at will at acting school, my focus became the competition of who came in and are they better than me? Does, it, does the teacher who I later needed to like me like them more? I doubted. I watched myself. I could not risk for fear of finding out the answer was no or yes, that I wasn't what I needed to be. At home was terrible confusion and pain and that occupied most of my brain. Between all this, I stopped getting fed by what I was doing. 
I dropped out. I stopped doing all things creative. Everything was spoiled by me. I was dancing in the gaps between long periods of illness. The pattern I didn't want to see was firmly established. I lived in two worlds, the world in bed and the world out. I worked around it. The days out of bed, I jumped and I worked and wanting to suck the marrow out of life before I plummeted again. It was a landmine of shame, deeply buried, that I hid from all the world except my family, who denied it anyway. Hypochondriac, even my best friend whispered. No big, my family said. Why aren't you thriving? Why aren't I? My head hung as I dragged myself along the sidewalks of New York. Ambition moving one foot, one sparkling step after another. Music from fame and Rocky firing my blood. When I acted out the whole A Bat Out of Hell album or David Bowie in my living room, the electricity moved through me and told me who I was. And it wanted to share, share with the whole world. The thing was, you have to understand, that my ability to have that feeling where you lose yourself, where you lose time when I wrote or acted or sang or danced, faded slowly like life drains our hair to gray. At this point, the desire still burned, but the ability to have it flow through me became less and less. What I want to tell you, what I want to speak, is the nightmare of losing all motivation. When even the desire is gone, this disease, chronic Lyme disease, it takes away all motivation, first your dreams, then after time, the will to get out of bed, because honestly, oftentimes you just can't. You realize one day you can't dredge up the will to clean off your own four day funk or brush your teeth. It is like your soul is bleached. You look out your eyes and it looks hazy. It looks hazy now, even as I'm talking to you. There is a dark convertible top over your head. You cannot clear the dark from your mind as it becomes your eyes. Soon you cannot even distinguish that the dark is not you. You feel dried up, your eyes, your vulva, your lips. You have no juice, you are a corn husk. The world is turning gray, the color is leaking, but over the years, though you thrashed like a beached fish out of, out of water in the out of bed time, gulping for air, and the vibrant flashes of color you think you may remember before seven seem a mirage in the gray wasteland that is occasionally punctuated by pools of grief and loss. I can barely look. When I do, my atom bomb starts rumbling. I have lost words, words that have been the only hand that I could reach up out of the water to help people grab when I was drowning, words that, <sighs> words that used to tumble and come. I cannot think. I had a big vocabulary once. I, I think I remember caring about the world, wanting to help others. Did I ever feel that deep love that I remembered for friends, for family, for the moon and the night and that kind of funky flower smell when I turned the corner to walk to school? I cannot feel that care anymore or love, just fear and anxiety over how to survive another day when I can't work or even get out of bed. Fear of the undone things that must be done to keep my shelter, to have enough food. How can I afford the supplement I need? What if I can't? I, I cannot think about the hopelessness of not being able to afford treatment for Lyme disease. I, as I lose sight in my right eye, as I fear, I will one day lose my sanity to this corkscrewed sister of syphilis, this bacteria that bores deeper with every passing untreated day. I cannot. I lie in bed, 
day after day, and I wonder, why am I alive? I have no purpose. I have no idea who I am. See, being sick from age six means I dropped out of conservatory, dropped out of college three times, spent my 20s and 30s when most people are out in the world seeing their reflections reflected back, I spent that time in bed. The years I was better, that gap between, I tried to play catch up, college, roles and plays, even then always pushing through fatigue and depression, trying to outrun the next collapse into bed. Now every day I hear the clock ticking, make up time, lost time, but I have no motivation, no energy. This disease has stolen precious time. On a good day, when ambition flares, still sometimes, it is like a car parked and racing. It overheats and then maybe explodes. Sometimes it feels comforting to think about exploding, to let the atom bomb within explode and take my life. I think I could have been so much. I think one day I was. I even think they finally invented something that can bypass the grace of God. Did I tell you that I lost my ability to dance? Why doesn't my body do what it did? Why doesn't it fly? Why can't I think of what to do as my mind just blanks and I stand there stiffly and then need to lie down? See the pages, I have to read it. Oh, and I forgot about my voice. One day I just, I couldn't sing anymore. I don't even, to this day, really don't know what happened. Now as I fight to sing again, I am told that I'm like a stroke victim. My body lost connection and couldn't follow orders. It forgot what to do. It's another plugged hole. My voice will not raft over my feelings. It cracks and my voice drowns like my words. A laughable, ineffectual dance of expression where I have to sell out and sing empty phrases to stay in tune. Piece by piece, this illness has stolen from me. I know this now because as I make tiny progresses in healing, tiny parts of me unfreeze. And one day I realize I am feeling love. Soon, it is so intense, it overflows my container. I can barely contain it. The four, five, six-year-old has come back to me. But to gain it and then lose it again, Chronic Lyme disease makes you well-versed in the flowers for Algernon game. There is no cure, maybe remission, with the maw of reoccurrence always threatening underneath. You live in between repre reprieves and flares. And every flare where you fall back, where you tasted who you were, where you dared to dream who you might be falls again. Where you lose, you stumble over your once articulate tongue that drew companionship and connection and love to you, where your body keeps you away from human contact because you are so sick and so tired and so immune fragile when an average cold becomes the black hole that threatens to swallow you again as months and months pass as your weakened immune system allows all the other bugs it was guarding out of the dungeon. A common cold or a flu becomes a sentence in solitary isolation, away from all human contact, where all you have is your health regimens and pill schedules and your own sick mind whispering, yelling at you, darkened with illness, and you pray. If you can even get the motivation to do that, you pray, please God, 
please take me or heal me, one or the other. I cannot bear a life sentence of uselessness, of being reduced to this husk of lost potential. Please take me or use me. The atom bomb is not sitting down and working at, at art. The atom bomb is the ice pick aimed at my insides as another year passes and I get older and my options narrow naturally. The atom bomb is that I did, am doing something wrong. The atom bomb is that this is all there is and all I will end up being. It is fury. It is jealousy at the living. It is the sharpest stab, darkest regret, self-disappointment, grief at what could have been, mocking my artist pretension. My atom bomb is that I was such a loving, open, caring, creative child once. And I am grateful that I have a few precious loved ones. But many of my family and friends have forsaken me. God has forsaken me. And if he, she hadn't, then I must be doing something wrong. But I cannot figure out what I did wrong all these years. And I'm trying, I'm trying so hard in therapy and everything I do, but I just can't get it. And now, when I need my mind the most to dig out of this darkest hole, the thoughts are gone. I cannot make them come. It's like there's gauze in my head. It's like there's a fog in my head. This is brain fog. I feel like I lost half my IQ at least. I have no words to even explain it to you. No coordination or steps to dance it, no voice to sing it, no motivation to even try any of these things. I am not drowning. I am disappearing. I am fading. Slowly, slowly, every day, I become more transparent until I fade away having lost the memory of who I might have been anyway. The atom bomb, slow ticking, the empty, bleached, numb shell unable to move from the bed, unable to stand her own void. The atom bomb, the pain, the flashes of drive, no outlet, no hole. Boom.